Elden Ring has exposed the gaming realm. They haven't unearthed some sort of scandal or made some devs cry. Well, it may have made some devs cry on Twitter, but most importantly, Elden Ring has brought to everyone's attention what a game needs to succeed, what a game doesn't need to succeed, and what a game should strive for to create a lasting reputation and legacy. Elden Ring has taught the gaming community a lot. Hey everyone, my name is Adam with Brawby Got This, and in my YouTube channel here and in my Twitch stream, I have talked a lot about before how issues that really plague the gaming world when it comes to developing and producing games. I've touched on hyper monetization and how I believe it's getting out of control in gaming. Uh, I've talked about poor products being released and quite frankly, half-assed games, which has caused a little bit of a bad taste in people's mouths. But I also talk about how I think gaming is reaching a breaking point where gamers or consumers are getting tired of products that just want to suck them dry of money, their time, and their energy. Elden Ring has been a breath of fresh air for a lot of gamers, and this is a game that's had a massive splash in the mainstream of gaming. So let's go ahead and talk about how Elden Ring has been exposing gaming right now. Real quick, I just want to give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for the support and the YouTube members. I'll have more on that later in the video. So in the intro, I talked about how Elden Ring and From Software has shown the gaming world what a game needs to succeed. So we'll start there. Too many gaming companies out there are designing games and developing them for short-term profit and goals. Examples of this are Assassin's Creed, World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, etc., etc. You could almost list most games in today's world for developing for the short-term profit. Why do they do this? Well, I would assume that analytics data and people that are smarter than me have found out that the product that they are producing can generate more profit in the model of development that they're using now than say a traditional model of gaming development. An example of this could be old school RuneScape. It was made in the early 2000s and basically any game made before I'd say about 2008 is really a game that maybe was made in the traditional model of gaming development in my opinion because there was a lack of microtransactions in gaming at that point which is a good thing. And also at that time it seemed like people were actually just making games really good. They made games as a passion. They didn't make it for this ridiculous profit model. At least that's what it felt like. Although businesses do run off profit, at what cost does it start being a negative variable when you sacrifice the quality of the product and the longevity of the product for short term gain? I believe that gamers and consumers in general are starting to get fed up with crap products. So many things in this world are made poorly, they're rushed, and they're not well thought out. Heck, I'm even guilty of this. Some of my content in this channel early on was crap. It wasn't well made and it was rushed and I just have since then tried to work and make it the best quality content that I can. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Adam here with Bra We Got This and I am bringing you guys a new video, um, a new series, a new game. Um, it's definitely not new though, it's a very old game, but this is my um, 99 cooking guide on RuneScape 2007. Elden Ring has created a quality product that has boosted even more the reputation of From Software. Yes, Elden Ring isn't perfect. It has some performance issues at launch that in my opinion were addressed very quickly and I actually didn't have any issues with performance, but I know some people did. So the first thing a game needs to succeed is a quality product. What makes a quality product? That's pretty different depending on who or what you ask, right? What I believe that makes a quality product in a game is that the game works well, that's one thing. You know, you compare this to the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 and you'll see a massive difference. Cyberpunk 2077 in that regard was not a quality gaming product. Johnny, see what happened? Something feels off here. You don't say. I think that the amount of content available at launch does play into the game being a quality product because it allows you to feel that the time and money you spent in the game was worth that $60 and for some people $70 because of the consoles. For instance, if you could play through most of the content in 20 hours, you probably would be like, eh, I don't know if that was worth $60. It could be for some people, but it might not be for others. Also, I don't think that sheer content alone makes a game quality because Black Desert Online is terrible and it has a lot of content, but it's not a quality game. Another big thing that makes a quality game is the satisfaction and reward you get when you defeat 
bosses or when you do content in the game or something notable in the game. Games should reward you when you do something that is hard or took you a while or you should get some sort of satisfaction from this. Another factor that makes a quality game is there are multiple approaches and ways to play the game. We are going to touch more on this in what games don't need to succeed section, but the ability that you have to play multiple different styles of combat or level up your character before a boss fight or even speed run or skip things, there's just so many different ways to play Elden Ring that I believe it just adds a lot of variety. The next thing that games need to succeed that we have learned from Elden Ring is simplicity and sticking to its core strengths. From Software didn't just make a completely opposite off the wall game that has no correlation to their previous titles like Bloodborne or the Souls series. Elden Ring has a lot of that DNA. They kept the systems and the gameplay that they excel at, but they added different features to the game that really enhance and improve the player experience. One of these is the open worldness of the game versus, let's say, Dark Souls. Elden Ring doesn't force you to fight Margit over and over and over again because you could literally spend 100 hours out in the world before Margit and come back and fight Margit. This was a fantastic idea and it worked to perfection. They kept the simplicity in their combat and their menus and their core gameplay features. A game though that doesn't do this well is Call of Duty. Again, Call of Duty had a simple multiplayer formula that worked for years. Obviously, microtransactions have plagued the game, but one of the core features that they have moved away from or changed was prestiging. This was a system that a lot of players loved about multiplayer. Now they have a seasonal one, which sucks. They have found probably that the data or analytics of these seasonal prestiges are probably more profitable than traditional prestiging, which is annoying to me because this is just something they tried to overcomplicate by sacrificing a core gameplay feature. It just didn't make any sense, but it probably makes them more money. With Elden Ring bringing such a simple open world and a system to the game, what additional effects does this actually bring? It brings players into this game that normally would never play a Souls game. There are countless people and friends that I know that don't like Souls games, but they loved Elden Ring. That is a massive win for a company that usually only appeals to a niche market. When you broaden your customer base by adding something like that, they just struck gold because now you have millions of new players that are invested and want to try potential new games in the future and maybe you want to even go back and try your old games. Look at the stats of these players on Steam Charts. It's kind of insane. Steam Charts numbers will go down over time, but Elden Ring is sitting currently at March 28th, 355k concurrent players, which is crazy. Like it's up there with Lost Ark, Dota 2, Counter-Strike. Those are games that like don't like technically have an end. Like you just play them countless, you know, endlessly. The Elden Ring is like a single player game. I mean, look at this. What single player game is in the top 10 right now? Uh, none of them from what I see. Counter-Strike is multiplayer. Dota's multiplayer. Lost Ark's multiplayer. PUBG's multiplayer. Apex multiplayer. Rust multiplayer. Grand Theft Auto 5 multiplayer if you're doing like all the RP stuff. It's crazy. Like Elden Ring is just making this insane splash and that's ridiculous. If you also look at the Elden Ring success uh, in perspective, if you look at the website um, ArsTechnica.com, it gives you an Elden Ring versus previous FromSoft uh, titles. It gives you their sales that they had, which we'll talk about a little later in the monetization. But look at the Elden Ring sales. It's already blown all the other games out of the water in like the first like week that it came out. It's insane. Look at that perspective on that graph of how many sales that it has. It's ridiculous. So now that we've talked about what games need to succeed that we've learned from Elden Ring, let's talk about what games don't actually need to succeed, but gaming developers just keep pumping in games. Well, the elephant in the room is obviously monetization and hyper monetization. Elden Ring has exposed gaming and proven that you do not need excessive monetization or even monetization at all after the game is released to succeed as a game. And for those of you that have watched my channel a lot, know my feelings on hyper monetization. I think it's just ruining massive multiplayer online game. And I think it's killing gaming slowly, but the effects will not be seen for years to come from that. On the surface, gaming is generating more and more revenue every year. But again, at what cost? I think players will soon grow tired of spending so much money in games over the years to come. So many games today are live service games. Elden Ring is not. 
And in live service games, they use microtransactions to fuel a lot of the revenue that the game generates. The problem is we are starting to see microtransactions in single player experiences now. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is an example of this. Why the heck do single player games have these now? Because they know they will get people to buy things from the store. These companies are trying to once again capitalize on the short term gain rather than provide a good lasting product first. I understand why live service games have microtransactions. I'm still not a fan of it, but single player games having them is just flat out weird and messed up. Elden Ring just blows all this out of the water because this is a game that doesn't rely on microtransactions first to provide a quote unquote successful game. Because it seems like most gaming companies now, or publishers, only see games as a success from the amount of money they make, regardless of the means of how they made it. I just wish that companies would actually care about how they make the money, which I know is never gonna happen. Let me give you an example though. Activision Blizzard made over $8 billion in revenue in 2021, according to Statista. 6.4 billion of that was microtransactions and subscriptions, which is ridiculous. They say that the majority of that is Candy Crush and COD Mobile. Even the money that you see that this company generated isn't because the games are actually quality games, it's because people have spending problems. They have gambling addictions. And some portion of this crowd, there are people that genuinely like the skins they put out in Warzone and some of these games. But these games that Activision Blizzard make now aren't really even that good anymore. Like, when's the last time you played an Activision Blizzard game and felt, wow, this is a fantastic game. This is one of a kind. This is, this is, this makes me want to spend money. Probably a long time. For WoW players, it's probably tons of years ago that since WoW's had a good patch to most players. For Call of Duty players, it's probably five to seven years. The only product that they've created recently that people have genuinely liked is Warzone. But the reason people spend money in it is because they want the cool stuff, and that's really the only way to get the cool stuff. They have earnable skins, yes, but it takes you forever. The whole point I'm trying to make is that Elden Ring sold 12 million copies in five days, according to their tweets and news outlets. That is insane. They outsold every game in February with just five days to sell copies. From Software blew their other games out of the water. And if you did the math and you just assumed that everyone paid 60 bucks, which some people paid more and some people paid less, they made around $720 million in revenue. Elden Ring has no microtransactions, and yet they hit almost one third of Activision Blizzard's product sales in the year of 2021 in five days. And they've created a product that has been successful because of the quality rather than the subpar quality and loads of in-game purchases that people can't resist because they have spending problems. Besides monetization, and microtransactions, what else has Elden Ring shown the gaming community that they don't need for success? Well, the biggest one is the difficulty of the game. The From Software games typically have a pretty steep learning curve, and a lot of people don't like the games, including me, because of that. But I think that if they cater to the crowd that wants to be easy, then they essentially Gosh. tarnish their product, no pun intended there. What From Software did is they kept their traditional difficulty of the game, but by making the game open world, it actually allowed players to choose and carve out an easier path to beating the game. I think what this shows the gaming community is that you can create a very polar opposite experience in your game without having a clear cut difficulty setting. And they used gameplay and open worldness exploration to help give players advantages. They gave people a lot of choice with it. This leads to the next thing I wanna talk about, which brings all the other previous points together. And that is how Elden Ring and From Software is creating a lasting reputation and something that will be around for years to come. I think there are only a few games that are generational pieces. One of the ones that I can think of that really stick with a lot of people is Skyrim. Think about how many people know about Skyrim, played Skyrim, modded Skyrim, bought Skyrim for the 1,000th time. They'll buy just about anything. The game was a generational game for a lot of players because it's still talked about. Content is still made for it. YouTube channels are built around it. It gets so much standing because it was a great game that left a massive impact. Elden Ring is going to be one of these games. This game has hit the mainstream. Heck, even PETA made a guide on the game, which is ridiculous. <laughs> ah! 
but it's a game that has had so much positive and refreshing impact on so many gamers that people will come back to the game. How did they obtain this though? They obtained this by sticking to their strong suits and not losing their identity in their game. They designed the game for quality over maximum revenue first. They took their time creating this and most importantly, they didn't give in to over monetization. From Software has shown the gaming world that the maximum revenue model isn't everything. From Software has gained trust, value, and respect because of all of this. That respect, that trust, and that value, in my opinion, is more valuable than the extra $7 billion that Activision made. And I know some of you may be like, bro, that's $7 billion more dollars for a company. But to me, it's not worth losing the trust, respect, and value that you have from your clientele, your consumers, or your followers. That trust that you build with your customers is important. I know this video may not make a difference in the world of gaming because massive gaming companies don't care at all about the customer. All they care about is the bottom line and their data. And they're fine with making a crap product. And I don't think it's right. There's not much I can do to change it, but I do hope that this video does find a dev at From Software that has helped create Elden Ring. I really want to say thank you for making a quality game. I hope that this will start to be a trend again in, in the gaming world. I hope that less monetization will be seen in games. I really hope this reaches someone in the Elden Ring dev community because I, I really think you guys and gals created a fantastic experience for a lot of gamers. So again, I just wanna thank the patrons and the YouTube members and everyone else here in the channel. Thank you so much. If you'd like to check out all that, my Twitch stream, my website, our Discord, check out all the links below down in the description. But I do appreciate everyone coming to the video today. And just remember, have faith, be great. And I'll see you guys on a video game.